Hi there, this is Anmesh from Pixim Perfect. I hope you're having a great day and making it an awesome one. In this video, I'm going to share with you the easiest and also the best way to make backdrops absolutely seamless in Photoshop and also totally wrinkle free. And the only flawless way to do that in my book is actually emulating it completely. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know my friend what to do. Check the link in the description. First of all, let's make a selection of the subject. You can take all the time in the world with the pen tool and the refining, but in this case, I'm going to go the fast route to save time. And that is, you just got to select the magic wand tool, the quick selection tool or the object selection tool and at the top you will see select subject. If you're using the latest version of Photoshop, it'll give you a great starting point and in many cases, you don't have to do a single thing. Also, it does the job of selecting here perfectly in the later versions. So you might have to make some little adjustments, but it's pretty fine. Once you have a selection, make sure you have a copy of the background layer. Just drag it and drop it right there. If you pressed Ctrl or Command J, only that portion would be on a separate layer and it would be rasterized. We don't want that. We want it with a mask. So with the selection active, just click on the mask button. You can also name this subject. All right. We also want one more selection for the shadow because when we make it seamless, we definitely want to see the shadow. Unless if you don't want to see it, it'll be a simple background changing process. But we're going to create a shadow. To make a shadow, simply make another copy of the background layer. So let's go to the background layer and make a copy by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Now make a selection of the shadow area. So with the help of the lasso tool, stay a little outside. All right. And make a selection. You can always erase it, increase it. It's absolutely up to you because this is non-destructive. Now click on the mask button. This is a mask, right? Non-destructive. You can always change things here and there. All right. So this is the shadow. Now we need to create the background. So how do we match this exact backdrop? Pretty simple. All you got to do is to create a gradient. So create a layer above the background layer. You can also choose a gradient adjustment layer. But to keep things simple, we're going to go the old fashioned route. So let's choose the gradient tool right now. All right. And now single click on the gradient right over there at the top. And once you click on that, let's create our own gradient for the right hand side. If you single click on this at the bottom, which determines the color, single click on the color and then choose the rightmost color or the brightmost color in here. All right. And hit OK. For the left one, single click on this one. Let's choose the darkest color in here. Also make sure the sample size is three by three or five by five so that you're not sampling a point or maybe accidentally a noise. We don't want that to happen. Hit OK. Hit OK again. Now, once we have the gradient in place, let's drag in a gradient from the right to the left. Now, while you drag in the gradient, if you hold the shift key, it'll create a gradient in straight line. So let's just release it right over there. And there you have it. It's wonderful, isn't it? Now, I know what you might be thinking. The shadow just doesn't look right. It's just a ground, right? So we need to make some adjustments there. So this is the background. Let's name this seamless. All right. Now for the shadow, what does shadow do? It darkens. Now what is the blend mode which darkens? Multiply. So change the blend mode from normal to multiply. It still looks like something is missing. And also the shadow has a lot of colors in it. You know why? Because the blue of the jeans just creates a color cast. We don't want that in this scenario. So if you don't want it, it's pretty simple. Just take away all the colors by pressing Control Shift U. Command Shift U. It desaturates it. Now what is the next step? The next step is adjusting it, adjusting it using curves. So click on the adjustment icon and then choose curve so that all of this excessive areas just go away. And also we want to limit it just to the shadows. And to do that, simply click on this button. This creates a clipping mask. You see this arrow right there, my friend. It means that the curves is limited just to the shadow layer. Now take the rightmost slider to the left. It makes the bright areas brighter. Now, as you can see, the bright areas are going away. Also, you can make the dark areas even more darker if you want to enhance the shadow right there. But we can keep it this way. If you want to lighten the shadow, we can also do it by taking it up. So we can do it. Let's take it a little up to adjust it. You can adjust it all the way you want. Now, once you do it, you can again go to the mask right there. Take the brush with black as the foreground color and make sure you have chosen the soft round brush. Just erase the extras. So slowly and gradually, just erase it. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now keep in mind, all of this is non-destructive. Anytime you want to make any adjustments to the shadow, make it a little darker or brighter. Simply just double click on the symbol of the curves in the curves adjustment layer and just adjust these points. If you want to make the shadows darker, just take this point down and you can easily do that. Now here, if I look at it, there is something missing. The shadow just still doesn't look right. The shadow is okay, but the color of the shadow looks a little off. 
we want it to match the color of the background. So how do we do that? We simply create a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and choosing hue saturation. And also we want to limit it just to the shadow. And how do we do that again? Simply click on this button. What does this do? It creates a clipping mask. Now, just check colorize because this is already black and white. We already desaturated it. It doesn't have any color in it. So we want to colorize it. We want to add color to it. So just increase the saturation and play with the hue to see which color matches the most. So in my opinion, this color is matching a lot. Now I will slowly and gradually decrease the saturation and adjust it just where it looks all right. So to me, 20 looks all right. And have a look at the shadow. It's so realistic. The color is so nice. It looks pretty darn amazing. Now still, the background doesn't have it all, right? If you look at the original backdrop, it had a little texture to it. It had a little noise to it, right? Also, we want to add a ground element to it. It's too seamless. How do we make that happen? Pretty simple. First of all, let's create one more layer above the background seamless. And let's name this ground light. What do we do here? Simply create a gradient from black to white. So let's choose a gradient from black to white. And we're going to create a gradient like this. So the ground should be brighter and the backdrop should be darker. So now let's start it from right here and go like this. All right. It gives a nice illusion of having a wall in the background and ground at the bottom, but it's just too much. So change the blend mode from normal to screen because we want to add light to it. Still, it's just too much. So what do we do again? Simply decrease the opacity. Slowly and gradually increase it to your liking. In my opinion, I'm going to keep it to 20. And also in the left hand side, there shouldn't be more light because the light is coming from the right hand side. So we create a mask for this. And in that mask, we create another gradient where black is on the left and white is on the right. So right now reverse is checked, uncheck it and create a gradient from black to white, black on the left and white on the right. And have a look at it. It looks a little more better, but it's completely gone from the left hand side. Let's drag it a little more from the left. How about this? That looks a lot better, a whole lot better. All right, that's better. Now have a look. Look at the ground element. Here's the before, here's the after. If you want to increase the opacity, you can increase it. You can increase it to 35. But in my opinion, if you ask me, 20 was just enough. Or maybe let's go 25. All right, that's good. Still, if you look at the subject, there's a lot of noise in there, but in the background, there's just no noise. So that would be our last step. Press Control Shift N, Command Shift N. Change the blend mode to overlay. Check fill with overlay neutral color. This will fill the layer with 50% gray. And as you know, overlay is a blend mode which hides everything that is 50% gray. Hit OK. Let's name this grain. All right. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. So that whatever filter we apply, we can change the values later. All right, let's zoom in on the face to analyze the noise because now is the time when we add the noise and we have to match it with that of the subject. So let's go to filter, noise, and then add noise. 45 is fine right over there. Uniform, make sure it's monochromatic. Hit OK. Something about the noise just doesn't look right. You know what it is? It's very, very sharp. Noise on the subject is a little blurry. It's a little larger. How do we do that? Well, simply blur it. Go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. A blur of 0 0.8 or 1 would do. What if we do 1? Yes, 1 suits better. Hit OK. And there you go. The noise <laughs> matches. Now, if you want lesser noise, you can always double click on add noise. Hit OK and decrease it from 45 to 40 or 35. Or what I like to do is you can just decrease the opacity and try to match that. So for me, if you ask me, I'm going to keep it at about 75. And there you go. If I zoom out, have a look at it. It's so seamless. Even if you have a look at the legs, the shadow is so nice and it goes so nicely, but there might be a little more problem. And I'm nitpicking just too much. This is excessive nitpicking. And that is, there's a little bit of blue around there on the edges of her feet. So how do we take that away? Pretty simple. Let's go up just above the subject layer, create another layer. Let's name this layer color correction. All right. And change the blend mode from normal to color. Take the brush and make sure the brush is relatively large and take a sample by holding the Alt key, the Option key, click to take a sample around the feet and simply paint in right there around the edges and it'll go away. Have a look. Take a sample from right here and paint. Now, as we paint, the paint is leaking out. 
it's also leaking into the background. We want to limit it just to the subject. What do we do again? We just did it a while ago and that is create a clipping mask. In this case, the way you do it is by holding the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two layers. Have a look at this arrow right there. Now it's only limited just to the subject. It's gone. Here's the before, here's the after. Also, if you want a little more light from that of the background, if you want to correct it, hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on it and maybe give it a little more light. It just is too much, right? So decrease the flow to about 10% and let's try it again. It's a little better. All right, there you go, it's gone. On the right hand side, there are some. Increase the flow back to 100. Hold the Alt key, the Option key, click to take a sample. Now, if you're having difficulty taking samples, just make sure you click on the eyedropper tool right there. Make sure you choose sample all layers. Get back to the brush. Hold the Alt key, the Option key, click to take a sample and just paint. It's gone. It's just magically gone. Just pick the color that you want to paint with and that's it. Now down in here, there are still some issues. So just take sample from here. Now again, we didn't take too much time with the selection. So some areas are not selected very properly, but you know, that's very minute things. That really doesn't matter. People won't be able to catch it. But if you have the time, as I told you, take all the time in the world to make the perfect selection. We just used what? Select subject, the automatic selection from Photoshop. And actually it's fixed, even with select subject. And there you have it, my friend, a wonderful, seamless, wrinkle-free backdrop. And here's the great advantage of this. You can just write anything in the background, place anything in the background. So if you wanted to write anything just below the subject layer, add any other layer, add any element you want. So you can just add anything, actually, literally, just anything right in there. So let's center this. And there you go, my friend. You can have anything in the background. You have a seamless backdrop. You have a wrinkle-free backdrop. And you also, not to forget, have the lighting and the shadows done as well. So just a short reminder, to create a seamless backdrop, which is absolutely wrinkle-free and looks totally flawless, the best way is to emulate it. And to do that, you put the subject on a brand new layer, create the backdrop according to the existing backdrop, take samples, create a gradient. You can also use solid color if you want. And then do not forget the ground element, add a little bit light to it, make sure the shadow is intact. So you need to put shadows separately along with the subject, below the subject, there should be the shadow, change its blend mode to multiply, adjust it using curves. And there you have a perfect backdrop and subject combination. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much again for watching, I'll see you in my next one, till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.